Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today we are playing Hogak. Now this is a list that really interested me, not so much because of what's in it, but because of what's absent from it. There is no bridge from below in this deck list. So if you're unfamiliar with Hogak, the idea is we're trying to use things like Stitcher Supplier, Careful Study, Hedron Crab, these sorts of things to put cards into our graveyard and then play multiple creatures in a turn to get back Venge Vines and then cast our Hogaks. And just kind of like go off that way, playing all these grave crawlers and things like that. So that's what we're trying to do. Normally this deck would have Bridge from Below and sometimes Ultra of Dementia as a way of grinding and being able to sort of mill over our whole deck and then mill over our opponent's deck by sacrificing loads of Hogax and then bringing them back, making loads of zombies. You mill yourself out until you have all your bridges, you play as many Hogax as you can and then you can just mill your opponent out in one turn. But this is not doing that. This version I was sent is a bit more interesting because we've got just more things to come back. So we've got a couple of prized amalgams. We've got these Satyr Wayfinders to help mill us a bit more. We've got some dazes for a little bit of interaction in our main deck. So we're kind of like an aggro deck that uses the graveyard rather than a combo deck, which is interesting to me and a little bit different. So I thought I'd give this one a whirl. This did... Uh, this, this appeared in a tournament. I can't remember what tournament it was, but it placed okay in the tournament. So I thought I'd give it a whirl and see how we end up with it. Mana base wise, we have one Dried Armor because it's a creature and that's someone's going to be useful to fetch. And the rest of it is just mana. All of our mana sources produce black apart from this Dried Armor. So we've got three Bayous, three Underground Seas, a Swamp, and then a bunch of fetch lands. Lots of fetch lands because we're running Blood Gust, of course. So that's more or less what we're trying to do recur Grave Crawlers and use it to bring back Prize Amalgam, Vengevine, and Hogak. And just be big. Sideboard wise, we've got. Some Graveyard Hate. We got three Leyline and one Surgical Extraction, which is a weird split to me, but I'm going to go with the list that I was sent. So these are obviously going to be for Graveyard decks, like Reanimator is the main one, but obviously Leyline and the Void is also pretty good against decks that are trying to use Echo Eons. Surgical Extraction can be something we might even want to board in against a deck that's got a very specific card that's good against our creatures, like Swords the Plowshares, perhaps. That might be worth doing. We'll see. So we've got a couple of thoughts these to punch holes in combo decks more than anything, but sometimes we'll want to hit a control deck with that. A singleton collector roof. Not sure how useful one collector roof is going to be, but here it is. We don't really have any way to tutor for it that I can immediately see in our deck, so not convinced this is going to be that useful personally, but it's kind of teaming up with these other slots, right? So we have this, but we also have these three force of vigor, which is going to be used to blow up artifacts, but also can hit enchantments like Lady on the Void, which is obviously very good against us. We have a couple of Abrupt Decays, an Assassin's Trophy, a few catch-all answers, and then a Snuff Out. So it's kind of like bits and bobs in the sideboard. And even though there's like different amounts of cards and stuff, so you know, we've got one here, one here and stuff, they, they're kind of overlapping in different ways. So we can kind of bring in different hearts for different matchups, but then some will have them all. So we'll have, you know, all our Artifact Hate in the 8-cast matchup, but we'll have the Collector Roof in the Storm matchup and not necessarily the Force of Figures. Stuff like that. Uh, we also have this Dark Blast, which is an absolute beating for Elves. I, I've definitely won games. I think it was a game I played on my channel a couple of months ago where I just single-handedly won the game just with Dark Blast. I just killed every Elf they played every single turn, and it was just brutal. So I like a Dark Blast in a deck that is going to put a load of cards in its graveyard. That makes sense to me. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Stuff Out's a good tempo card for killing stuff if we need that. And we've got plenty of Swamps. So that's the deck, really. Hopefully we're just going to go relatively fast. We're looking to put like a lot of power in and kind of clock people on turn three to four, I guess we're aiming for here. We have a little bit of disruption with Cabal Therapies as well and the Dazes, so maybe we can survive a slightly longer game. But against decks that aren't trying to combo us off, we have a relatively good grind plan of just playing guys over and over and over again. And if they do have a ley line, at least we have a lot of guys. We're not all in on our graveyard as much. Like, yes, we do have Hogak and Vengevine in our deck and prized amalgam, but we can cast the Vengevine and the amalgam. It's not like we've got this Ultra of Dementia that's not going to do anything, which the other builds have. So I'm curious to see how this plays. Before we do that though, let me just say like, comment, subscribe. These things cost you nothing and they help me out. And I now have a Discord for the channel. So I'll put that in the description. If you want to join my Discord, it's free to join the Discord. I don't charge people to join a Discord or anything. Uh, I just like to hear from you. So why not pop in there, say hello and talk about some stuff, I guess. All right, let's play some Legacy. This is our opening hand on the draw. It doesn't actually do anything. We can put Hogax and Amalgam into the graveyard, but then what? So I think we should Mulligan. This hand is a bit of a mystery. 
we have a Venge Vine, we have a way of putting it in the graveyard. Do we think the top three cards of our library are going to help and make this hand good? Um, I'm willing to try it. I think we're probably looking at putting back some amount of lands here. Uh, get rid of this, just the swamp, I think. Maybe we're supposed to keep the swamp, but I like having all these fetch lands. Let's face it, if we get turn one Blood Moon, our deck doesn't do anything anyway, so... I don't think it's worth keeping that basic for that reason. And we're definitely playing a blue land on turn one. Just an Ancient Tomb from our opponent. That's interesting. That could be a combo deck or anything, really. All right, let's go and get ourselves another Grand Sea. So it could be like a prison style deck that just didn't have a prison piece on turn one. It could be like an Initiative-style deck. It could be a Show-and-Tell deck. What do we want here? And we're going to chuck out the Venge Vine and probably a Bayou here. We want to keep our fetch lands because we're going to be playing this Hedron Crab next turn. Hopefully we get a bit of a better idea of what our opponent's doing. If they drop a Chalice now, it's obviously something they drew this turn, so we would have dropped a turn one. Cavern of Souls. We're looking more towards the initiative side of things. So a straight-up creature matchup shouldn't be too bad for us. Three mana human. Magus of the Moon. That is pretty bad for us. Okay. All right. How do we navigate through this? We need to draw some black cards. All right, I think we are losing this one. Having that basic swamp might have been useful. I don't think it's actually gonna make any difference here because we don't have anything to do with our swamp either. We're basically gonna to need to find, we're never gonna be able to cast two creatures here. I think we're just gonna to die to this Magus of the Moon here. I don't think it's realistic for us to beat. No, I think we can just pack it up here. Like our hand, our deck doesn't really function without the other colors of mana here. So, I think we want these things in which kill the Magus. Snuff Out does not kill Magus, which is interesting and annoying. Uh, Thought Seize is probably quite important here. There's a case of do you want these Force of Vigors for the Ley Lines they might be bringing in and the Blood Boons they might be bringing in. So these are definitely options. I think we're probably looking at trimming some of these, these sorts of things. I think the days is okay but i don't know if we want the dazes here i think the other disruption we're bringing is better that gives us three cards to try and trim here if we want all of these things or we can just not have the force of vigors and be a little bit cold to some of these things we are bringing in a, we've got six discard spells three removal spells that still doesn't feel amazing maybe you'll we'll trim an imp is something we can use under the blood moon though so that's quite handy uh, our opponent's probably not going to be very good against Hogaki stuff. I guess the Bloodgast is a bit weak in this matchup. Because they're often going to have creatures that outclass it. It's not really going to get damage in. Is that fine? In that case, are we supposed to trim the Bloodgasts for Sated Wayfinders? Bloodgast is really helpful with the Cabal Therapy. So I think we'll submit like this. I imagine our opponent probably has some amount of Ley Lines here. So it's going to be awkward for us. Um, this is a good hand, so I don't think we can let this one go, so I guess we keep. But if our opponent starts the game with a ley line in play, our hand gets a lot worse. If they go ley line into Blood Moon, we just lose. Our opponent's mulligan to six. Their deck generally mulligans quite a bit anyway, because it's looking for, like, lock pieces plus other stuff going on. So I think... Yeah, they need lock pieces, mana, and like something to win the game with. So they should be mulliganing quite aggressively with the London Mulligan rule. Five cards. All right. So we can start the game off with a careful study. So we can put away this prized amalgam and this bloodgast. And the next turn we can get them both back. So even if they have a blood moon or something, they can play on turn one. We can still get back our bloodgast, which then gets back our prized amalgam. Once upon a time, let's see what they find. Our opponent's probably on the sort of like red green initiative deck, and they've just gone for the Maguses. But I could be wrong, could be more prisony. Okay, so there's a Magus. There's a City of Traitors. There's a Chromox. Okay, this is what we're doing. And there's the Magus. Sure. Turn one Magus the Moon. A little bit tricky for us. Let's get this guy back. We can't cast this because of our inability to make mana other than red. So I guess we are passing the turn here. We do get the other guy back here, though. So we get a 3-3. Three, three. So we are ahead on board. If our opponent is just all in on this Magus, then maybe we can actually win this game still, or at least force it to block at some point. 
which then unlocks our hand. All right. Caves of Chaos Adventurer. That's a thing, isn't it? So we can go and get our swamp here by attacking with the guys. This guy can't block, so they might as well just come in for two with the... No, they didn't want to come in. Interesting. So this turn we attack with both of these. Sure. So we get the initiative, so we can get our swamp, and we can cast our little guy. So we'll get this guy back. And we'll play another guy that can't block. And then we pass the turn. So we're still not looking great here by any stretch of the imagination. But we're still playing the game. We can only prevent one of this damage, so we just have to let it rumble through and then just try and race them. Like we have, what, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight power. So if our opponent doesn't have a, like a reasonable follow up, okay, they're just going to forge up their Magus. That's a pretty smart move. And they got a follow up threat as well. Fail the mirror break. Yeah, that's pretty good too. Force of Vigor. We don't have a green card, so let's stop thinking about that one. I guess we have to go to attacks. Probably sending in these guys. This can block here, which is not great for us. But such as that. Yeah, so they block there. They block there. So we kill that little guy. Our blood gas hits. We get to forge up if we want to. So we can forge up our Dryad Arbor here. We don't have a zombie right now. And we'll still play a land out. We could hold our cards and then try and discard them later. That's another thing we could do, actually. Maybe we're supposed to do that, actually. I don't necessarily think it's going to matter too much. I think we are losing this game. But the Chaos of Chaos Adventurer will trade with our Dried Arbor here. We do have to make this trade. They get the initiative. They dome us for five. We attack with the Bloodgast. If it dies, we get all of our, that's our, we get our stuff back. If it doesn't die, we get the initiative. So, like, not a great situation, but it's a situation that we're in. Minsk and Boo. Is that post-combat Minsk and Boo? That's so weird. Why would you not just play that straight up? That's very weird to me. This is also a good demonstration of why I don't actually like Force of Vigor at the moment in decks that can play things like Abrupt Decay. Like, if you watch my Green Black Depths video that I think came out yesterday, I don't have Force of Vigors in it. I just have the... Uh, four Abrupt Decays. Obviously that deck has the ability to make um, Green Black Mana under a Blood Moon a lot more easily because of the Petals and stuff. Oh, I understand why Force of Vigor is in here because Leyline is a big issue. But All right, let's go to attacks. We are dead here. But... All right, sure. So our Blood Gas dies. <clears throat> Play out his land. Got guys back. And we're just dead. We might as well pack it up. Yeah, we just lost to Blood Moon on turn 2 and Blood Moon on turn 1. Uh, not much we can really do about that one. So, on to the next round. Alright, this hand looks like a pretty good one. I think we will keep this. We do Underground Sea, Careful Study. We can pitch Bloodgast and Gravecrawl. If we find another land, we get to play two creatures. And if this, the Stitcher Supply being the first one, might put a Vengevine in the bin. Alternatively, we can play the safety of Wayfinder and then play the two creatures the turn after. We have a lot of options. Our hand seems pretty decent. We're on the play as well. We always have the spicy days. Right, so crack our verdant catacombs, go and get ourselves an underground sea. Cast this careful study. Force of will, pitching ice fang. I'm going to daze this. I would very much like this to resolve. This also guarantees us the land to bring up blood gas next turn. They're looking pretty good there. So we draw two cards. What are we getting rid of? Gravecrawler and Bloodgast are the two obvious ones. So next turn, we play the Stitcher's Supplier probably. Could be the Wayfinder. Well, it can't be the Wayfinder, right? Because we don't have two mana because we dazed. All right. Come on, brain. Catch up. So our opponent is probably some sort of bank control list. Could be a lure in though. Green Sun Zenith for Dryad Arbor from our opponents. This looks like one of these bank... Zenith or four color Zenith. Could even be the five color Zenith deck. They tend to be more along the Yorion lines though. Okay. We will have you back, please. And then we will cast this Stitcher Supply. So these decks do sometimes run Wasteland, which is why I played the basic out here. So we can guarantee the Wayfinder next turn. So what do we find? Another Grave Crawler. Okay, that's pretty good. We don't have. Let's keep our graveyard popped out to make life easier. We don't have a readily available way of 
uh, sacrificing our stitcher supply because there's no cabal therapy there. So I think our next turn is probably the Wayfinder. Well, it's probably attack first and then play Wayfinder. And then turn after we can bring back our Crawlers and try and trigger Revenge Vine. We could just play two Crawlers now so that we can play around something like uh, an Endurance a bit better. So I think we play one Grave Crawler, attack with both creatures, and then if they block the Stitcher of Supply and it dies, we still have a Zombie in play to play the Grave Crawler. Now all this can change if we draw something like a Careful Study, which would be very good right now, or all manner of things that we can find. Okay, our opponent did a Ponder, and they did not shuffle their library. Not a big fan of that, but... There's a Vengevine. Okay, I think we will play one of these Grave Crawlers out. Go to attacks. Because you need to have a zombie in play for Grave Crawler to work. So you have two Grave Crawlers that they can, you can pretty much always keep one around. I imagine we're going to get stores to Plowshare here. No? This could be an Ice Fang. It kills our guy and draws them a card. That's fine for them. If they're blocking here, I have to imagine you hit the Bloodcast. Just because it's the most damage. No, they're just taking it all. Okay, they just want to get a card so they have more information and then can make a block with informed information. So we'll play the land that they know we have. And we'll play the second Grave Crawler. So they've got a reasonable amount of damage, which is sort of like a, a bit of an aggro-y deck here. Now, our, if our opponents are luring, they could win this turn, which is a bit awkward for us. All right, they're playing something. Natural Order. Okay, that's similarly terrible for us. This is probably going to be an Attraxa. I'm just going to dig them a whole bunch. Yep, so there it is. All right. Yeah, so Natural Order has kind of become not just a combo card, but just like a, a mid rangey slash controlly card where you can just kind of play the game naturally, but also have this thing that just gives you a four mana massive guy that draws you a million cards. Chooses Force of Will, Endurance, Ponder, Flooded Strand. Force of Will, Endurance, Ponder, Flooded Strand. Okay, so I have to imagine that this Endurance could be in our very near future. Attacking into Attraxa feels impossible unless we can find a Hogak. Did not find a Hogak. I think we are supposed to... We, we can't attack in this because it's got lifelink and it just completely invalidates what we're doing. I think we're going to get Bayou here. So we could attack with just a Stitcher Supply if we want to trade them getting 7 life for us milling 3 cards. Because we basically are looking for Hogak here. I think we just cast this guy and see how we go. We get one of these. I guess we'll take the Dryad Arbor, just in case we need a creature for Hogak. Because that's all we're trying to do right now. Do I think we should be attacking into the Attractor with a Stitcher Supplier? That's a tough call. I think we are, as mad as that is. Yeah, we're just taking it. I think that's probably the only damage we're going to push through, though. This tracks is a bit of a beating for the poor little aggro player over here. This is where, if we were the combo build, where we could mill our opponent out, we'd be in a much better spot. As we are, we are so far behind in this game. And the only way that we can get back into it is getting a Hogak into play, because at least it's uh, slightly bigger than a Traxxer. It will trade with the Traxxer, which has already drawn them a whole bunch of cards. So, yeah. Pretty sure we've lost. Cracking the flow strand. Back down to 19 after going back up. So... I suspect this game will finish with our opponent having a very high light total. It's a fairy time reveler. Okay, that's pretty good against a Hogak. Yeah, they're just going to save up the counters on it. So we can attack into this. Yikes. Um, I guess we go and get Bayou and cast the Vengevine. Maybe we're jamming at the Teferi here. Feels terrible. We know they have a Force of Will as well. So the Hogak's going to be very hard to get into play. This might be a bait spell that gets the Force of Will. I highly doubt it given what our setup is. Our creatures are very expendable. Alright, a daze. We cannot pay for this. So at this point I don't think we can win the game. Like they can bounce a Hogak. We can never beat this in combat. They gain 7 life. We can't attack around it. Just not going to happen for us, I'm afraid. So, this is what we're looking at. Um... Not a lot of these cards feel very good, apart from the Snuff Out, uh, the Thought Seize. The Snuff Out is okay on some of their other guys, but their other guys are just kind of there, and they already get value just for existing. Us trying to stuff them out doesn't feel great, and we can't snuff out the thing they're finding. 
which is the real problem, I guess. I think Thought Seize is probably the best way to handle this. I'm not convinced we want Days anymore. We'll just take an Assassin's Trophy here and a bit of hand disruption. I think the Days as a plan definitely gets worse once they've already seen it. Uh, we could try something like having the Surgical so we can Thought Seize them or Cabal Therapy them and then try and strip all the, like, the plows from their deck or whatever. Or all the natural orders or something, but I don't think that's worth doing. I think just having the discard and trying to beat down quickly is going to be good enough. Okay. Um, this hand doesn't seem great. I think we can do better. Wouldn't mind some hand disruption or... Well, all right. This is an interesting one, isn't it? If we find a land, it's very good. Do I think we're going to draw a land in our top card, though? That does seem a bit sketch. Uh, I think we can... <sighs> So what do we could do here? So we play the Puget Imp on turn one. We can pitch these three. If we find a land, we can play a crab, mill over a whole bunch of cards, play another crab. I think we do keep this. And we believe in the heart of the cards. This has to be a an, an underground sea. So we could just play out the crab here. Because if the land we draw is a green land like a bayou or a basic swamp, we can't cast two creatures next turn, which is kind of a thing we want to do. So I think we'll just play out the crab here. And if they plow this, we're okay for next turn anyway. And this does give us the possibility of maybe just doing a really bananas double crab turn. Now, if we draw a fetch land, we can mill over a whole bunch of our library. Flood Strand, they're cracking it. Probably getting a Tundra. No, a Trop. Okay, they might not have... White mana in their deck, maybe. Sure, so they're going to get a little bit of mana off of this. Is it going to be blue or is it going to be white mana? Could be green. They could just have a green sun zenith to follow up. Okay, white mana. So our creature is getting plowed. Sure. We thought that might happen. Hmm, not really what we wanted there, was it? Okay, we're going to play out this putrid imp. So we can pitch some cards in our hand. But our opponent is an endurance deck with swords to plowshares in. They've also got the... To ferry to bounce Hogak. They've got Ice Fangs to like roadblock some of our other guys a little bit. And then they've got Natural Order for a Traxxer, which kind of just buries us. So I'm not really sure how we're supposed to win this matchup. Feels real tough. And they've got Uro as well. So they've got so much life gain built into their deck as well as kill spells and stuff. Feels like uh, some of the control decks, like the Hot Bant decks, seem to have just morphed into straight up Bant using Natural Order Attractor. Right, I guess we attack here for our almighty one point of damage. Eat it. Kapow. We believed in the heart of the cards. We should not have believed in the heart of the cards. I did say this could definitely fall apart for us. And it did. So there you go. Get this crab down. That way if we draw a land we can do double crabs. And that might be enough to push us back into the game and maybe get Hogak into play. We need another black creature or a green creature and we need five cards in our graveyard. So our opponent is on a decent chunk of mana this turn. So if they have a land, they can go and get Dried Arbor here and then just put a Traxxer into play and then we lose the game. I don't think we can beat this Traxxer. We'll take another draw step. Okay, no, they didn't. They could have a Green Sun Zenith which then gets the Dried Arbor, and then they attract her. But they should be able to put an attraction to play this turn. Nope, they're just pondering. Okay. That's alright for us, I guess. We might just be getting an Uro into play instead. So you've got green, green, blue, blue in their mana base there. Yeah. So we have to beat an Uro with our aggro deck of two ones. This does not feel like a good idea for us. Again, we do have the ability to put a lot of cards into our graveyard if we can draw a fetch land which might be able to rustle up some hogax which will beat the uro in combat and maybe give us some venge vines so we can like widen our board out so we have options here yikes um we just can't do anything here we're not even supposed to play the hedron crab because we need two creatures in case we have a venge vine so this game is pretty over now Definitely a chunk of this is on me for keeping a hand that needed another land. I'll definitely take some of the blame for this one. But I think given how grim this matchup looked, keeping a really powerful hand that just needs one thing to 
to go off and just put loads of power into play and kind of go wild, I think is worth doing. I don't think we can keep a slow, grindy hand. We have to keep a hand that's sort of exploded. And we didn't get there with it because we didn't draw the land. I think I'd probably make the same decision again. But uh, we are looking somewhat foolish right now. Yeah, they're just hard casting attractors. I think we can just call it a day there, can't we? All right, we got mashed pretty hard by this deck. I think this deck should be smashing us pretty regularly here. They're like, they don't have to punk their mana base anymore to play red spells. And they've got this cool attractor top end, which is just so unbeatable for a lot of decks. Like us, for example. We have one card in our 75 that can even deal with this once it comes into play. Otherwise, the best shot we have is hoping that we can attack and they'll block our Hogak with it. Despite the fact that they can gain 7 life every attack step. So, yeah. And we are just done there. Let's go into the next match. Our hand in this one is no good, right? We have three of the same card and not really anything else. So let's mulligan this one. This hand is way better. So we'll keep this. And we have to bottom one of these cards. I think we're probably bottoming... I think it's the Hogak. But the Hogak is so strong. Maybe, like We have this combo here that's pretty effective. We can put any of these into play. Maybe I'm going to be bold and get rid of this Marsh Flats. Because if we find one more land in the top four cards of our library we just get to go wild and put Vengevine and Hogak into play next turn I think because this mills us for six cards both of these and then they'll tap to cast the Hogak so pretty happy about our turn two this can obviously fall apart in quite a horrible way but I think again the power of this is so strong that you have to keep it right our opponent has played a wooded foothills and passed we find a land this turn. We did not find a land this turn. So this one needs to find a land. Well, or I draw step next turn. But I believe. If they counter this, it's not very good. But with a foothills, not necessarily counts for it. Oh, this is a land. It's not the land we were looking for. So we want to put this Bloodgast and this Vengevine in because the Hogak we can cast from hand or graveyard. All right. We need to find a black land in our next draw step, ideally. But we can... Three, four, five. We can put Hogak into play, but we'll lose our Vengevine. So we have to make a choice. Now, if we mill over a Cabal Therapy, maybe things change a little bit. We can do some more stuff there. But if we can find a Fetch Land this turn, that would be ideal. Okay, our opponent's playing the really sweet Goblin deck that I think is really good and really fun. All right, so I think step one is... Cast the Stitcher's Supplier. Let's mill some cards. Right. Then we play this land out. We bring back two Blood Ghasts. Yeah. And we crack this. For a Bayou looking at our hand right now. Then we cast this. Okay, this is the thing we're supposed to be doing with our deck. So we get this Venge Vine back. This comes in. Then we mill some more cards. And then we can cast... One, two, three, four... Yeah, we can cast this Hogak without losing anything of value in our graveyard. One, two, three, four, five. And then we'll tap. And we go to tax. So this is what the deck can do. So we've got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 power on turn 2. That's like empty the Warren's level of cool stuff. Now our opponent is a combo deck. So if they have... Uh, this guy that they're probably playing, the Harbinger. Yep, so we will lose the game now. Because what this does is this gives the Conspicuous Snoop the ability to Kiki Jiki, targeting itself to make a copy. So they can make as many copies as they want. And then the last copy targets the Boggart Harbinger, which then turns into the Sling Gang Lieutenant. So they can just fire all their guys off at us. So this is a turn three combo from a deck that also has a pretty good aggro game plan, as well as another combo in it with Food Chain. So this is what I think aggro decks should be in the format. Not just straight up aggro, but with like an ability to just say, I win the game. Whereas we don't have that. We used to have it in other builds where they had the Ultra of Dementia. So you just had the ability to just go, actually, no, we're just going to win the game now. They failed to find a Goblin card. What is our opponent doing over there? Do they misclick? I don't know what's going on. I really don't know what's going on here. So I'm going to play this Crab of the Hedron. Then we're going to play this Dried Arbor. We will mill ourselves a little bit. 
If we had a fetch down, we could interfere with our opponent's top card of their library, but we don't. So we will just try to think. We only have... We have two zombies. They can kill both of our zombies. So I think we are supposed to just play the Grave Corner now. Okay, they're scooping it up. Interesting. They had the win right there with Kiki Jiki. Maybe they're just new to the deck. It happens. All right, let's go to the next game. I'll take a free one if it's going. Snuff Out is good here. Dark Blast has text. We can kill things like a Lackey early on. Thoughtseize... Definitely has some use as to these other removal spells. Force of Vigor can blow up food chain, but I think we're just better with things that also blow up creatures. Again, I don't like your like days here. They have Cavern of Souls in their deck as a thing as well. Satyr Wayfinder feels very slow for this sort of matchup. And we're looking at cutting some more stuff. Uh, is it Bloodgasts? We can trim on Bloodgast. Maybe trim on Imp here. We're not going to have to worry about removal on our guys that much. So I think we can... Run something along these lines and see how we fare. This hand looks pretty nice to me. Keep. So we have Stitcher Supply. Well, we have Careful Study on turn one. And then we can Stitcher Supplier, Cabal Therapy, do a whole lot of stuff. So this one goes and gets us an Underground C. Let's cast this. Careful Study. So what are we throwing away? I think we want to get rid of a Bloodgast here. And the Venge Vine. You seem the most sensible things to get rid of. So we can bring back the Venge Vine next turn and attack. Black and a red. What is this going to be? Chalice of the Void for one. That's pretty good. Now we have an answer to this. I was not expecting to see this out of the Goblins player though. A little bit rude. Um, sure. So we'll get this guy back. And we'll pass a turn. We will Assassin's Trophy their Chalice at the end of turn. And then we will do our thing. That's what our opponent has here. There is a world where we have to abrupt uh, Assassin's Trophy something else, but I hope that that's not where we end up here. Okay, that's fine. That's just a goblin. We should attack because we can't block and they probably don't want to trade their chieftain here. Yeah, we just take two. Let's go to end of the turn. Let's crack this for a bayou. Green, black. Goodbye, Chalice. They get themselves a land. It's a basic land here. It's over to us. So step one is playing this guy out. One more three cards. See my graveyard popped out. Uh, one, two, three, four. So we can just cast the Hogak right now. I think that's probably the best thing to do. Just put it on the stack immediately. Uh, Rainforest, Careful Study, Verdant Catacombs, Assassin's Trophy, Careful Study. Sure. So we get our Avenged Mine back as well now. Very macabre. Sure. We still get our Hogak here. Okay, so now we will Cabal Therapy our opponent. We're going to name Goblin Ringleader. Kikijiki. And a bunch of other stuff. Okay. So I think we will flash this back. Sacrificing our Stitcher Supplier here. We'll get to mill some cards. And then what are we going to name here? I think it's Kiki Jiki because that's the next thing they're going to be able to cast. Although if they top deck a soul land, I'm going to want to hit Muxus, aren't I? Sure. So let's leave them with Kiki Jiki and Pashalik Mons. And we're going to play out a land here. And we're going to go and get ourselves Underground Sea. And we're going to cast this. Okay, well, that should have been a Swamp, I think, actually. Just in case our opponent... Our opponent doesn't look like they're going to be playing a Blood Moon effect, looking at what they've got in play right now. And I certainly haven't seen Goblin List really wanting to do that. But it's certainly possible. This is just going to be Patrick Mons. Squee. Sure. So this is for the food chain combo. This plus food chain is infinite mana. Alrighty. Uh, we play this pre-combat. In case we find a Vengevine. We did not find a Vengevine. Sure. So we will go to attacks. Attack with all creatures. Let's see what you fancy doing. So they can use Squee just to keep blocking. But Hogak is a big lad with Trample, so I'm just going to trade off here. They can cast this from their graveyard, so it's relatively free. So we can either play a Gravecrawler here, or we can play this Amalgam. The Amalgam is more damage. I think we're just going to put this into play. This time we'll get the Swamp. We'll cast this. Black. Blue. Blue. So we've got a lot of power in play. Now, we shouldn't have won the first game, because our opponent had lethal. I guess they might have had Kiki Jiki in hand is the only thing. 
If they had Kikijiki in hand, then they probably... That's probably why they didn't do that. Food chain. Sure. So our opponent has infinite mana, but we know both the cards in their hand. And neither of them matter. Oh, that's not true, actually. Pashalik Mons lets them make infinite mana, right? Uh, make infinite goblins, because they can sacrifice a goblin. Yes, yeah, so they make infinite mana here. Then they play Squee out. Then they play Pashalik Mons. Use the mana to sacrifice Squee. And do some doming of us. But I'm not sure if our opponent missed Lethal in the game one, or they just had the Kiki Jiki in hand. So I'm going to see if they can play this one out. See if they make any mistakes or not. Right, so they've played the Pashalik Mons now. So it does feel like they know what they're doing. There's the Squee. Yeah, I think our opponent knows what they're doing here. So we're just going to scoop this one up. Uh, I think our plan is still the same here. Pretty unfortunate that we uh, Cabal therapied our opponent and then they drew Squee and then Food Chain. And then, like the following draws. It's a bit awkward. So we could play Force of Vigor if we care about the Food Chain combo. But again, I don't think we do. I think we just have a bit of discard and we just need to try and beat them down quickly. I think that's better than just having these reactive cards later on. Uh, we can keep this one. Yeah, so our opponent had the Kikijiki in hand. I was just checking. So they didn't misplay. They just uh, got a bit unlucky. Underground C. Careful study. We can bin off this Bloodgast and this Hogak. Right, it's our opponent's turn now. I think their deck is uh, is better than ours, to be honest. I think their deck is really good. We have a Hierarch. Sure. Over to us. We have another careful study. Let's try this. Um, do you want it to be a fetch land to save ourselves one point of damage? I think probably... Although, yeah, let's save ourselves a point of damage, I think. Let's get this blood gas back. All right, we're not getting it back. If we'd have played the fetch land, we would have played around this. But there we go. Yeah, that's on me. We could have had our blood gas there. Yikes. Uh, we're going to name food chain here, because I think that's the easiest way that this game goes out of hand right now. Chalice, Conspicuous, Snoop, Muxus, sure. Yeah, I think we just lost this one. Yeah, that was... a Bad play of us not playing the fetch down there. Because we can crack the fetch down in response to their macabre. Still get our guys. Yep. So now there's a chalice. Let's take one from this guy. They've got matron. So they have the kill in three turns. Next time they play snoop. The turn after they play matron. Turn after they play harbinger and win. So we can't play any of these cards. I think we're just going to concede here. Yeah, we definitely misplayed. We could have had those um, Bloodgast in play, which then could have got the Hogak into play. Although they probably don't Fairy Macabre the Bloodgast. They just Fairy Macabre the Hogak in that case, if we play it with a fetch land, which means that we're going to get... So we probably wouldn't get the Hogak. we just get the Bloodgast, but we just don't race. And the Chalice is pretty brutal there as well. Yeah, not happy with how I played that one. I still think we lose that one, but I should... Berate myself for not playing the fetch land for sure. All right, on to round four. I don't think we can keep this one. It doesn't really do anything. We'd be just relying on the top of our deck and Stitcher's Supply. I think we can mulligan. We can get the same hand with like one or two less lands and it's just as good, really. It seems better. We've got a careful study and then we can do the Stitcher's Supply line. We can throw away one of our fetch lands here. So done. So we're going to play Underground C into careful study on turn one with Day's backup. Next turn, we can play out our Bloodgast. And there's a Saga. This could be a whole bunch of decks. Probably eight cast, I think, is the best as a Saga deck right now. Chrome Mox. Okay, so it's probably not eight cast because they can't play Chrome Mox because it needs artifacts to... You need non-artifacts to imprint onto it. Let's see. Dark Ritual. Okay, so this is like a mono-black Douthy Helm style deck. Profane Tutor. All right. Not something I'm going to be able to reliably daze here. Let's go. Blue Mana. Cast this. So if we find a Vengevine, ugh, that's terrible. Uh, I guess we put the Grave Quarter away because it's just not a thing that we want to do anything with. And we can play it off of our Stitcher Supplier. They seem unlikely to kill our Stitcher Supplier in response. Sure, so they've got a Profane Tutor here. We're not going to be able to daze this when it comes off. This could be Mono Black Painter using Profane to go and find Painter and then using the Earth Saga to find Grindstone. That's possible. An Urborg. That certainly helps us out a little bit. We can use our Marsh Flats just as Black Man, and then we want them for the landfall. We can crack them later. 
opponent is playing a pithing needle. What is this going to name? Is it going to name a fetch land? Ultra of Dementia. Okay, so that is the combo card that's not actually in our build of the deck today. So, interesting. Let's see what we find here. A Cabal Therapy. So we'll play this land. Which gets back our Bloodgast. So we could just have a Cabal Therapy turn here. Cabal Therapy, kill this, get this back, flash it back type thing. But I've probably only got two cards in hand. We're more worried about what they're getting off of these, th off of the Profane Tutor and the Urza Saga. That's more of the issue for us. I think we just need to go relatively hard here. I think we're supposed to play the Sate here this turn. And then next turn we do a bunch of stuff. And try and maybe catch them out with the Days. I do not think this play is great. But I think it, it sets up best to make sure that we can do something with uh, Vengevine. Like, we don't really have much going on apart from the Grey Crawler there. Let's have a look at the top cards of our library. A Dried Arbor. Uh, okay. Actually, if we don't take this Dried Arbor. So we got one, two, three, four, five. So we can lose one thing to put Hogak into play right now. So we can just put this Hogak into play right now. So get rid of the Crab, the Marsh Flats, the Careful Study, Dried Arbor. Tap this. Tap this. And we need to get rid of one more card. So we either get rid of the Blood Car Blood Ghast or the Grave Crawler. Now we want to use the Grave Crawler to bring back a Vengevine potentially. But we already can cast two creatures next turn. Oh, we can't actually because we got rid of the land. I think we have to get rid of the Blood Ghast here. And save the Grave Crawler. In case we can hit Spike a, a thing next turn. Alright, so we've got 11 power. But I have a feeling our opponent's going to combo us this turn. Alright, they've got a Demonic Tutor coming off here. We could daze this, but I think they'll pay. So I don't think that's going to necessarily get us. We can stop them having the mana. I think I'm going to let this go. Maybe that's wrong. Because if they have a land in hand, then it doesn't matter that we've made them pay. Whereas if they're playing something big like a ley line combo, we might be able to hit the ley line with it. Let's see what this finds. Tapping black mana off their saga because of the airborg. Very nice. Expedition map. Okay, so it's not a painter combo. They're just going to go and find another as a saga here. What have they got? A dark depths. Okay, so the mono black depths deck. I see. Vampire hex mage. Oh yes, we're going to get rewarded for saving this days now. Now we kind of know what our opponent's doing. Um, I don't think we're looking to get a venge vine in play right now, but we're just going to cast this cabal therapy tagging our opponent first. We're going to name Vampire X Mage in case I have another one. They do not. They have a Dark Ritual and a Douthy Voidwalker. Okay, so I think we're going to attack and then name the Douthy Voidwalker here. Let's play this. Mill ourselves a little bit. And we will flash this back tag on our opponent, sacrificing our Stitcher Supplier to mill ourselves some more. We're going to name Douthy Voidwalker. So they've got Urborg and Dark Ritual now. We can flash back to get rid of the Dark Ritual. I don't really see what that gains us here. If they play a Thespian stage, they can just make the guy anyway. I think we just leave all of our guys in play for now. Our opponent's got one draw to find something good here. Okay, we got a, we got a game win. We need to try and get this next one. So what, what's going to be good here, realistically? Collector Roof is going to have some text on it. These Thoughtseize are also going to have some text on it. These things might be useful. Uh, we kind of need to get rid of a Dathy Voidwalker if it's in play. So I think we'll keep these in. Our opponent is probably bringing in Leyline Helm versus us. So we're boarding in like all of this. I don't think our deck can handle boarding out that many cards. Um, let's have a think. Again, the Wayfinder isn't that impressive to me. Maybe we can get rid of the Imp here. Trim a Bloodgast. And then where are we at? Kind of need all of our disruption here. Maybe we're overboarding slightly. We can take out one of these. Just keep one force of vigor in. Oh, I wish one of these cards was a careful study. I don't know I could snap this one off. But I don't think I can keep this one. We'll just be relying on the Stitcher Supplier to do a lot of work. I think we can mulligan a hand. We have disruption for our opponent. We have just like mediocre beatdown. This doesn't feel great either. I think we're going to keep this on the draw. And we'll get rid of a th one Thoughtseize. I, th 
think. So we can thought season, and then cabal therapy and then cabal therapy again. That's a plan at least. I'm not convinced this is a good hand. I'm not entirely familiar with the mono black depths list. I know a few of them have been popping up lately. Thespian stage. Okay, opponent. Understood. There's an Erborg. That's good for us. All right, we're probably going to lose our thought seas here. This gives us an interesting choice. I think we probably just cabal therapy naming Delphi Voidwalker because that's going to be really hard for us to beat. We can name Expedition Map, but I think you just play that on turn one if it's in your hand, because that gives you the turn three kill, or the turn three 2020, which is going to roadblock a lot of what we're doing. I took the Assassin's Trophy, interesting. Let's play this, tap it for Black Mana to Thoughts use our opponent. So what are you working with over there, opponent? Um, pretty bad news. That's what we're working with here. Like we take the Hex Mage, so that they're a turn slower, but I don't think we can beat this clock at all. Um, so Assassin's Trophy does blow up lands. So that's the reason they took it, because it can blow up Dark Depths. Or Thespian Stage. Sure. Next turn they get to make a 2020. And they've got a Profane Tutor waiting in the wings in case something goes wrong for them. Tough. Tough game, this one. Um, like what do we do here? Well, I guess we just play... Black Black for a 2-1. Yeah, we are massively outclassed here. So they play the Dark Depths this turn. Then they can tap the Urborg and the Depths to activate the stage. Also, they've got the, the nice old border Depths, which is what I'm currently trading for for my real-life Green Black Depths deck, which I adore, which I made a video with, which I published a video with yesterday for you guys, I think. So, how do we beat a 2020 indestructible flying creature? That's black. Um, not really sure what we're intending to draw here. Uh, Putrid Imp can chump block for a turn. Not sure how that helps us out necessarily, but... Hedron Crab. Pretty sure we can't win now. We needed to draw the Putrid Imp, which I think we boarded out, actually. Yeah, let's concede this game. Maybe we do want this Putrid Imp just as a precautionary measure. Um, yikes. It's tough out there, isn't it? I think we do need to keep the, the maximum Hogax in. Their green cards are Force of Vigor if our opponent is on that sort of plan. Although it don't, doesn't feel like they're on that plan. Maybe we can take these out. Uh, I'll keep one in. I'll just have the, the guy back in. None of this really deals with a 2020. We don't have anything like a run afoul, which would be the easy way of dealing with it. Or Sudden Edict is good too. All right, we can keep this. We can Thought Seize on one, and then we can Crab... Double mill on two. We have to thought seize on one here because we might not get many opportunities to mess with our opponent's hand. Our hand is pretty thought seize proof itself. We have three enablers here. Let's play this, crack this, go and get ourselves an underground C. Can't we want the C so we can cast the crab next turn? Just thought seize our opponent. What are they working with here? Dalthy Void Walker, Duress Expedition Map. Hmm. Expedition map represents them getting a 2020 that we can't beat, so we have to take the expedition map and let them have the Void Voidwalker soon. So we might, we're basically trying to mill over a copy of Cabal Therapy in our next turn. We're going to lose one of our careful studies this turn, but that's fine. They play the Urborg in case they draw the Vampire Hex Mage next turn. Sure. Pretty easy dress. We have two of the same thing. That's the only thing you can take. Hand doesn't really mind that too much. Okay, so we're going to cast this. This lets us see six cards for a cabal yeah this is the best way to try and find a cabal therapy we could try and find a thought seize but that's not really going to help our game plan at the same time so let's mill for three that wasn't it okay let's crack this um we've got this for green source if we need it uh, i think we just get a buy no we need an underground seize so we can cast this careful study when we're talking about Middle for three again. Okay, so now we're casting this careful study. Okay, so we're not getting the things we want into the bin right now. Interesting. If we get rid of the Force of Vigor and the Hogak, the Dalthy stops future cards going into the graveyard. But it doesn't stop the things we have in there now. So... We want to draw a one-mana creature. Would be nice. Our opponent could just have it here as well and just bury us within it. Okay. 
Interesting. What are they imprinting here? They're imprinting the Doughty Voidwalker. Oh, that's because they have a 2020. I see. Okay, so we need to draw Putrid Imp. If we draw Putrid Imp, we might be able to win the game. It's going to be hard, but it's possible. That is not a Putrid Imp. Uh, so we can make all sorts of guys, but we don't have the Ultra Dementia kill. How many Vengevines can we make? Not enough. Right, we can cast this guy. Have a look at some more cards, I guess. We can't mill our opponent out here. Let's crack this. I don't think there's anything we have here. We don't have any Narc Amoebas or anything like that. There's a Vengevine. Holy Gap we can't cast. Yeah, we've just got nothing. Yikes. Our opponent was pretty lucky to draw the Hex Mage there off the top. But not much we can do about that one. I'm curious why they... I guess they were playing around Days. Because they saw Days previously. That's why they played the Chrome Mox there. But yeah. I thought we were going to have an interesting game where we, where they get the Dalfi Voidwalker. We have to try and win with what we have right there. But they just drew the thing and killed us because their deck is doing something powerful and ours, to be honest, isn't. All right, we've got one round to go to try and dodge the 05, which I'd really like to try and dodge. So let's hunker down and see if we can do that. All right, we're on the play for the last game, which helps. What is our hand doing here? Um, we have Cabal Therapy... So we can Cabal Therapy our opponent and then Blood Gasp, but this doesn't do anything. We need we need some sort of engine here. We need to be able to, This is all lands, so at least our Blood Gasp is not going anywhere. If we kept this, our Blood Gasp would get immediately sourced to Plowshares, because that would be the funniest outcome. Let's mulligan again. Alright, this is the proper hand. We can keep this. Two of these cards got to go, so we're going to get rid of... Uh, land and... Land, we're going to keep the Fetch Lands, just in case we want something like a... Swamp or something later on, but we're going to crack this for an underground sea. Let's careful study. Bloodgast and Gravecrawler. Pretty sensible to go there, I think. So if we find a Vengevine off the top, we can get the Vengevine into play with Bloodgast and Gravecrawler next turn. So that's a pretty nice way of looking at that. Currency Converter. Alright, so maybe some sort of like... Shark Steel type deck. Now, do we careful study here or do we try and... I think we just want to get some damage going here. So I think we have to play the Misty Rainforest first. So we can play around a daze. If we need to. So we'll play this one out. So you can play out the Grave Crawler here or we could careful study. I think we're just going to put some power on the board here. I use the term power a little bit loosely. We get this Underground Sea... And cast this little guy. And then pass. So the more cards we have in hand, the better careful study is. Because it means we're left with more cards at the end of it. So saving it for the next turn makes sense. A Caracas. So Hogak's going to be pretty bad in this matchup. So that's one of our big hitters completely blanked. A Prismatic Ending that blanks our guy. Sure. Not great. Right, so we'll try this careful study. Hmm... Interesting. I think we... Do we get rid of one and one here? Because we can at least hard cast one of them. If we draw one more land. Sure. I think we'll get rid of one of them. And then we'll attack with our guys. A little bit of damage. I think we play this out. Because if we draw a land next turn, we can just cast the Vengevine. I don't know how deep into red our opponent is going to be. Usually the Shark Steel Currency Converter decks are sort of... Just straight up blue-white, maybe splashing for Pyroblast. So that could be all their Volcanic Island is doing for them. Because they didn't fetch it, they just had it in hand, so. Crab of the Hedron. Okay. This is good. Let's play this. Let's sacrifice this. We're looking for Cabal Therapies and Grave Crawlers here. Um, do we get Dried Arbor here or not? I think we just get a Bayou. Mill ourselves for three cards. Cabal Therapy would be nice. Or a Grave Crawler, sure. So we can cast this, which will put our Vengevine into play, which we just got a two, but there we go. We've got Pride of the Amalgam in there as well, that's going to trigger, which is going to trigger this again, but it doesn't really matter. Attack with all creatures. Source of Plash is probably on our Vengevine. No. Okay. We're going to get Wrath here, maybe? Sure. So we have lethal damage next turn. So we've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12 points of damage. Now, if they can just remove the Vengevine... Okay, so we've got the game there. 
Now our opponent is a white deck, which means they have Caracas and Plows and things, so Hogak is definitely worse here. I think Thoughtseize is somewhere I am interested in being. They've seen the days. I don't know how good the days are going to be on the draw. I think I'd rather have Thoughtseize than Dazes. Like, the Hogak is kind of okay, but not great. Um, do you want Abrupt Decays? Collector Roofs? Snuff Out? Dark Blast? Surgical Extraction? I don't really like the tools we have for this matchup, really. It's just not working for me. I think we'll take a Surgical Extraction. Uh, we can extract Plows, but it looks like they're going to be possibly doing Currency Converter Loops, where they do Hall of Heliod, and I don't think we can beat Looping Shark Typhoons if we need to sort of eat through the last few points of damage. The other option we can have is bringing a Snuff Out to try and kill those things, but I'm not convinced that's where I want to be either. Abrupt Decay does kill some stuff. Our opponent could be having Rest in Pieces. Maybe we'll bring in one of these. These control decks tend to use their graveyard a little bit in some way, whether that's going to be Snapcaster Mage or whatever. I think having the one of Surgical is probably okay. All right. Let's try this. Can we get a match win with Hogak? Mm, this one is okay. We can keep this one. We get to Cabal Therapy our opponent. And then Cabal Therapy them again. Not a big lover of that draw. But here we are. So this is going to be a Cabal Therapy tagging our opponent. Do we name Brainstorm or do we name Swords to Plowshares? I think we name Swords to Plowshares here. Okay, a Blood Moon. Now we've already established that Blood Moon is pretty good. We did hit the Plow though. So our opponent can play a standstill this turn. They did not play a standstill this turn. Interesting. Okay, let's play this one out. So we can get this grave crawler, in, grave crawler into play now if we want to. But I think we're supposed to... I guess we can do both, right? So we can go crack this, get the underground C, cast this grave crawler, and then we can Cabal Therapy our opponent, sacrificing our Stitcher Supplier to mill ourselves a little bit more. And we can aim Blood Moon here. We've established that Blood Moon is hard for us to beat. Stifle, on the other hand, we uh, not Stifle, Standstill, we can beat. Supreme Verdict. Okay, so the Blood Moon goes. They've got a Supreme Verdict coming, but our creatures have a lot of sticking power, so I don't really mind that. There's a Volcanic. They drew a Plow. Are they going to play a source to pl uh, Standstill here? They are. Okay. We just have to crack this. I think there's no point trying to worry about it. Sure, have your cards. Can we have a crap, please? Let's crack this. Get an underground C. So you can play this Bloodgast and immediately get our Venge Vine. That seems okay to me. So our opponent basically has to um, play their Supreme Verdict this turn. And then we can play a land, get a Bloodgast. Well, we can careful study, play a land, get a Bloodgast back. And hopefully continue to apply pressure. Yep, there's a Verdict. Sure. Right, we're going to start off with this careful study. Alright, we'll get rid of these two cards here. We will play this land out to bring back our Bloodgast. We'll cast this Stitcher Supplier. Uh, have we got a Grave Crawler in there? We do not have a Grave Crawler. Interesting. We do have a Hogak though. So, black, black. Let's get rid of some lands. Brings back our Venge Vine. So, our opponent is now on 10 life, which means that all of our blood gas are going to have haste. Our opponent needs another Supreme Verdict here. But we have blood gas up the wazoo here. They conceded. We got a match win. We got a match win. All right, we dodged the 05. I'll take it. Phew. We are done with the league now. So let's. these are our results. So we... We won one game 2-0, but then we lost 1-2, lost 1-2, and then lost 0-2, 0-2. So not a great record. And I think we definitely could have played better in one of those rounds, but it was against a matchup where they kind of slaughtered us anyway because they were banned, but that doesn't mean I shouldn't be hard on myself for misplaying. Let's have a look at the deck. So this is the deck. And I think the last match kind of showed why this build of this deck is... A thing that exists right because pretty much all the cards in your deck are pressure you're not just having these like clunky um like ultra of dementia draws that don't really go anywhere 
like you've just got more guys and more hits because you've got these prize amalgams and stuff as well. So against a sort of slower control deck like that that doesn't have an, an easy stabilized option like an Uro or an Atraxa, you can really grind through them. But the problem is there aren't really many decks like that. I think even regular Shark still has a bit more board control just in the form of things like the Wanderer which can just exile one of our guys permanently, and then they can put a big shark to wall us. Now, our opponent might have been sharking. I imagine they would have been sharking. Uh, but we did we did approach them quite quickly. I think they maybe... I don't know, their hand was okay. I don't think they should have had standstill in their deck in the post-board games. I don't think that's what the game is about. But we got, we got a match win out of it. I don't like this build, though, because as you saw in all the other matchups... Everyone else was just doing unfair things, and we are just trying to play an aggro plan. Now, sometimes we got quite a lot of power out, but it still wasn't enough to beat some of the things our opponents were doing. Like, especially like the Dark Depths player, we, you know, we had a really nice start. We had all these creatures, we discard their hand, but, you know, we just lose if they do their one thing that their deck's built to do. I think if you're playing a dedicated aggro deck that's kind of like, we are not really interacting with our opponent much, we are just trying to make some guys and kill you. I think you should be playing Madness. I don't necessarily think the Madness deck is that good, but I think it is a lot stronger than this in terms of just an aggro deck. Now, we have a little bit of disruption here with some discard, but I think the, the blistering speed of the Madness deck is just a better place to be if you want to play an aggro deck. Or, you know, like an aggro deck like this rather than like a, a blue aggro deck or whatever. But the other thing is, if you want to play like an aggressive deck... You can play an aggressive deck with disruption these days. Like Delver, like the like the Rug Delver decks, they are aggressive decks with disruption. So instead of having a combo like Hogak would normally have, they have disruption. So I think you either want a combo, so like Food Chain Goblins, for example, is a really good one. Because it's this aggro deck where you have to stop their turn one lackey, otherwise they can just aggro out with Muxus. But they have two infinite combos built into their deck as well as a good game plan with loads of card advantage and tutoring. That just feels really strong. Whereas what we're doing here, especially without the combo, we don't have any I win buttons. We just kind of have to play these guys and it's very easy for them to disrupt us and we need certain selections of guys to really get there. And things like Caracas and Source of Plowshares can really jam us up. You could just play like a Jund aggro deck with a bit of discard and some interaction and some heavy hitters. Like, if you just make a... If you go Thought Seize turn 1, Targoyf turn 2, you're going to often put a decent amount of pressure on your opponent. Like, compared to what this deck is doing... This deck, yeah, sure, you can have the turn 2 where you put 10 power into play or whatever. Or 18 power, or, which we, we did once. I think, was it 18 or 14? We put a load of power in, and it wasn't good enough one time. So, you know, you can put in a lot of power, but also have disruptive elements. I don't think the amount of power you're doing here is worth it. Like, you could play something like Dredge, where you could make a lot of power straight away and strip multiple cards out of their hand with multiple Cabal Therapies. It just feels like we're playing, like, a worse Dredge deck or a worse Madness deck or whatever. Or just, like, kind of... The deck's too fair, right? That's the problem. We don't have the unfair stuff. And I think you need to be playing some sort of unfair thing in your aggro decks along the lines. Whether that's going to be some sort of food chain -y combo or whatever... I think you want that or you know or just actual solid interaction so combinations of forces and more discard removal spells that sort of thing or like disruptive creatures like death and taxes does where every single creature they play gives them more power to win the game with but also drastically reduces your opponent's options of how they can approach the game and what they can do whether you're constricting their mana or you're removing their creatures and adding to the board at the same time or stopping them drawing extra cards i think that is just a much better plan than just let's see if we can make some guys that doesn't doesn't really work to be honest the sideboard like we didn't have anything for merit Lage at all and i think with naya depths being a good deck again you you really need some sort of decent interaction with a merit Lage because otherwise you know, they're just going to stomp you. Because we ha um, with the initiative deck, like a lot of the Lanzi style decks and a lot of decks that were making Merit Lage tokens weren't very good. So you didn't see a lot of them. Now that White Plume Adventure is banned and that mono white initiative deck's gone, a lot of people are 
going back to playing these dark depth strategies, which means you definitely need to have something in place for them. Whether that's just, you know, some run of fouls or some sudden edicts or something. I think sudden edicts would be better than snuff out. I understand why the snuff out's there, but it's just one snuff out as well. What's it? The chance of it doing anything seemed quite low to me. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just don't think this deck is very good. To be honest, that's that's my conclusion. Don't play this deck. If you will play this deck, at least play the Ultra Dementia combo build, so you have an, an out button to just win games where you're behind, or things have gone wrong, or aggro isn't working. I think it's that's about all I can say. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one, and uh, we got very close to the own five, but we just managed to dodge it. So I'll take that as a consolation prize that we didn't have an 05 on the channel all right like comment subscribe do these things and why not join my discord the link should be in the description come to the discord and we can chat you can suggest what decks you want to see or what things you want to see me build around and so on and so forth all right thank you very much for watching and goodbye